Hello guys, take two. Why take two? Because I recorded the whole video and I didn't press start, so I have to do it all over again. Today, we're gonna be working for statically indeterminate structures and we're gonna be using the method of consistent, consistent deformations. In my mind, this is the this is the name that defined best this method, but it can be also called, or you can find it referred as the force method, force method, or a compatibility, compatibility method, or sometimes it's called superposition, which you should be familiar with. Superposition method or flexibility method. I say that you should be familiar with superposition because superposition is a you cover that or better say you should have covered that in mechanics of materials. <coughs> the method of superposition. So now what is the principle behind this? Let's say that you have a structure, a beam, simple beam like this and this is A and this is B, and then you have the reactions here, this is a fixed support, so you have AY, AX, MA, wait a second, let me see if I'm recording, because then if I'm not recording, yes, I am recording, cool. And this is gonna be BY, okay, BY. And I get this and I apply a force, whatever, the force is applied there, force P, different than zero, of course. Now, the first step towards solving this is can, it's checking if it's statically determinate or statically indeterminate and there is a previous video by the way that I explain some pros and cons from statically determinate and indeterminate uh, structures we learn how to determine that remember uh, if the number of reactions is equal to three times the number of body bodies uh, then it's statically determined the number of reactions here is four one two three four four reactions has to be equal to three times the number of bodies. This is only one body, so but it's not equal, then it's greater. Because the number of reactions is greater than that, that is statically indeterminate. And it's a statically indeterminate of first degree because four minus three is one. So first degree. Which means that you have one redundant. We discussed this name before, redundant, because I can take one of them out and the structure could be still stable and statically determined. So this is redundant of uh, statically indeterminate of first degree with one redundant of course. Now what do I mean by that? This is the this is the original structure. Whenever whenever I had that structure, let me see where is I did something if I find it because this office is a mess, but it's my mess. Where are you? Here. Okay, found it. Look at that. This is our model. Fixed support. Ah, but this roller shouldn't be here. This roller should be... I don't know. Look at that nastiness there. Here. This is oxidation, by the way. It's not nastiness. So this is a fixed support. This is a roller right there. And I'm going to apply the force here. If I apply a force here, this is a roller. When I apply the force, something like this is going to happen. You see that? That will be the deformed shape. That will be the deformed shape over there. I'm just holding it in case this goes over the roller. That's it. But that's what is happening there. You see? Kind of that is the deformed shape. So if that is the deformed shape, originally this was like that. And then it came like this. And it came here. And it was zero whatever the roller was holding it, the deflection at that point. So if you have that in this situation, this is gonna be zero here because it's fixed, so the rotation is zero. It's gonna come somewhere like that and it's gonna go there. Basically something like that. <coughs> now, what is this method? Why is it called superposition? What is it called consistent deformations? Because I can convert this into two or more. If we have one redundant, 
then I can convert this usually in two different structures. But if I have more than one redundant, then I have to do it two, three, four, five times. I don't know how many times. So I can take and select one redundant and eliminate it. But when you do that, you just have to be careful that the reaction, redundant, by redundant I mean reaction, okay? The reaction that you are eliminating has to be has to keep the structure first stable and second uh, statically determined. If I eliminate by, that would be perfect. Y would be perfect because if I eliminate by, the only thing that I have is this cantilever beam there, like that. And is this a structure statically determined? Oh yes, it is. This is ax. <coughs> this is ay, and this is ma. Just a cantilever beam. I can calculate that. Now, what happened? if I apply this type of a structure, and we can see it now here, once again, I can take this out, out, and I apply this equation, uh, this force here. When I apply the force here, my deformation is gonna be something like this. Meaning, at this point, wherever the support was, was supposed to be zero, but now it's not zero. Now I have a deflection at that point. Let me write it here. Now, when I do that, what I'm saying is this. This is going to come like that, and it's going to be like that. At this point, my deformation should be zero. But it's not. Now I have a deformation there. So this and that are not even close. So what is the, the next step? I say, OK, why? In this case, is this not deflecting? Oh, it's not deflecting because I'm pushing it up with a reaction by. Then why not to do that? I can get now the same structure that I had before, which is this. And then I'm going to get this, and I'm going to push this up with a value of by, which will produce this one. This is not the deformation by, this is just the force by that I'm applying. But the problem is I don't know how much is by. But I could very, very, very easy calculate the deformation, and we have done it, by a unit load. Unit load. So I can apply a unit load here, and then I'm going to get this deflection at that point, which is called FBB, or I call it FBB. And this is the flexibility coefficient. And that's why the method is also called flexibility method, because this FBB will be the amount of the formation here at that point in particular when I apply a unit load. Now, what do I know about this? What I know about this is this. The original deformation, and that's why it's called method of consistent deformation, my deformation should be zero. However, by eliminating that roller, I get a deformation of delta B. Then I'm gonna push it up. And I'm gonna push it up and I'm gonna get a, an FBB. But FBB is if I apply a unit load, but this is not a unit load, this is a BY load. So, because this is in the elastic range, we can consider that this is a proportional. So, if a unit load is going to give me FBB, a force of BY is going to give me FBB times BY. And now from here, I can calculate my BY as this. Now, basically, what is your method? What is the goal of doing this? <coughs> I'm sorry. The goal of doing this is this. You should know how to calculate that. We learned that. You can use, I don't know, virtual work. You can use double integral. You can use area moment. I haven't covered this, but I'm going to later on even though if it's not for this class, but I will do it. Uh, you can use a conjugate beam. Conjugate beams. 
which is another method for calculating deflections, really easy, and I can cover that later on also. But at least you know two methods to do that. Heck, you even have the the books. Uh, where is the books? Where are the books? Books, 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 books. Who stole my book? Nobody moves. My book. Oh. Yes. My book is here. Or one of my books is here. So if you go to the books, you can see. Oh, I need to calculate how much is the deflection when I apply uh, force P. Well, the deflection is that. Oh, but it's negative. No, but I'm pushing it up, so I can I can have that also. Uh, and and the deflection is that. So I can read it from here if I need to read it from there. What is going to happen in exam wise? I don't know. Depending on what I'm asking you to do, but just let me put here tables for charts. That sounds like grants. Charts. There you go. And apply that equation and calculate the redundant. Now, once you have by, you put it back here, and then you can calculate the rest of them because it's statically determined all over again. Now, be careful. Once again, what is the redundant? I could have selected by as a redundant. I could have selected ay as a redundant, and that will be still stable. Uh, I could select MA as a redundant, and what I'm, if I select MA, for example, as a redundant, then basically the this structure, instead of being like that, becomes this. A simple support structure. And instead of me pushing it up, what is happening is that this structure is forming like that. But I know that in my real structure, here, the rotation is zero. So then I have to get that structure that I had before, which is a, p a pin here, and I apply a unit moment there in that direction. And then I can calculate a flexibility rotational coefficient. And then I apply the same equation, but in this case, I select a rotation instead of deflection. And it's okay, you can do that. Now, you can say, what if I select a x? Well, if you select a x as a redundant, basically this is gonna move, this is gonna be free to slide and the structure is going to be unstable and that's not going to be good and you're not going to be able to calculate that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a problem like this in two ways. I'm going to select first by as a redundant and then I'm going to select the rotation or the moment over there as a redundant. Keep watching. See you in the next video or you see me in the next video.